Good afternoon. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead with our 2 o'clock presentation. And that speaker is going to be Steve Motts doing Excuse Me While I Burp. Steve's got 12 years of uh, cybersecurity experience at least, 18 years of IT experience at least. I work with him, and I know he's a smart and passionate guy, and uh, he'll tell you anything you want to know. Anything that you ask, he'll find an answer. And sometimes even uh, when you don't ask, he'll, he'll give you an answer. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, welcome Steve Motts, everybody. Thank you. Um, just want, I just had to do a quick, I just want to make sure everything works. I had to change colors because black didn't show up good. Anyways, I'm Steve Motts, as I said. Or as Doug said, um, I work for a large utility company here in the state of Michigan. Um, I do a lot of web testing. I wouldn't say it's penetration testing, but typically web testing sometimes leads into penetration testing. I do use Burp um, extensively in my testing. Are anyone in here familiar with Burp Suite? Yes, there's hands. That's good. So this might be a little overview for you. For those of you that don't know what Burp Suite is, it'll be a great uh, presentation for you because you'll get to see the value both from a developer and as a security practitioner. Um, I use as much as I can, and I also like to play with Christmas lights. And if you don't, if you've ever seen lights to Christmas or lights to music, I like to mess around and do that kind of stuff. But disclaimer: what I'm going to say here, obviously, is of my own opinion, not my employer's past or current. Um, obviously, the things I'm going to show you would be considered hacking. I don't advise you to do these on uh, websites that you own or you don't own. Um, and I would tell you, I'd advise if you've never messed with the tool itself, that you'll stand up. And I have some uh, slides in here and some uh, examples of uh, um, vulnerable web applications that you can use to test the tool um, before you move into your company or, or further. Like I said, just be careful using the tool. It can break stuff. So what's the talk about? Talks about Burp itself, the components that make up Burp, um, setup of it, methodology, how I use it. There is no right or wrong way to use Burp. Um, if you've if you've never used it, you'll see. If you have used it, people can use it in all different types and fashions. Um, how you use Burp to find vulnerabilities. Um, I'll do a demo walkthrough as long as the demo gods are nice to me today um, of just a couple um, examples, high level of how you can use Burp to find um, web uh, vulnerabilities. Um, if I have time, I'll get into Extender, um, which is just an add-on piece of Burp um, and how you can integrate it with tools such as SQL Map for doing SQL injection, things like this. So this is a little more technical talk than. Um, some of the previous ones. Um, some closing thoughts on where it can fit in your organization or even personally where you could use it. Um, a few links and then if I got time, question and answer. And at any time if you got a question, go ahead and interrupt. So what is Burp? It's an inter interception proxy, but it's a really a lot, lot more than that. But the foundation of it is an interception proxy. And if you don't know what an interception proxy is, it simply is it takes a request such as HTTP, and before it actually work, reaches the server, it allows you to intercept that request and manipulate that Chris, uh, request for good or bad things. Um, Burp is a platform for tools, so it's a bunch of tools. You'll see those here as I go through it. Um, for performing security testing of web applications. Um, other products that fit in this uh, scope are Fiddler. Um, for developers, Fiddler is really big. And also Zap Proxy is very similar to Burp. Um, I just happen to like Burp. If you like Zap Proxy, great. They both have their advantages and disadvantages. Um, I'm just a Burp guy. Um, it's really good at discovery and exploitation. Um, in my opinion, very, very low false positives from what I've seen. I've been using the tool a few years now. Um, it's Java-based, so it works across numerous different OSs, whether it's Linux or Windows or whatever. Um, so here's the components that actually make up Burp. Um, proxy, which is the core of Burp, um, that's where all your work is done and where you actually send um, uh, requests from to these other components. Spider, um, repeater and sequencer, decoder, intruder, scanner, um, save and search. So what's nice about the tool, it's free uh, for the most part. They do have a professional version. If you're a pen tester, you do a lot of web testing. I highly recommend it buying the professional version. It's very cheap for what you get. It's $2.99 a year. Um, but you don't need that, um, and you can still do um, really good testing. The only things, as you can see, that are removed are the scanner and the save search functionality. 
There's ways around you can save it. The scanner is really good. That's why I suggest if you're doing penetration testing that the scanner be included. An intruder also, the reason it has a star on it, is in the free version they put limitation how fast intruder can actually go after a website. In, in the professional version, that, that limitation is removed. So let's talk about proxy. I'm sure people know what it is, so I'm not going to go in depth, but essentially it just in, in, it inspects and modifies the traffic um, prior to it reaching the web server. Um, spider, just like you've heard, it's no different. Spidering a website, it literally you can just point it at a website and it will spider the web application content and functionality. It automatically finds forms smart enough to understand, hey, do you want to put something in those forms for free future? And for instance, if you're doing a pen test and the first page is a login page and you've been credentialed, uh, you put those credentials in Burp, it's smart enough to use those credentials in the future to tra traverse through the other uh, layers of the website. Repeater, um, which there's two big tools I use in here, and you'll see this here in a little bit, but Repeater and Intruder are the two main tools I use all the time in Burp. Um, <clears throat> repeater, it just allows you to manually modify a request or reissue an HTTP request and allow you to see real time um, what that um, re um, manually modified uh, page, what happened on the server side. Sequencer is testing session cookie um, and, and how often a session cookie might come up, i.e. the same name. Obviously, if you don't have a good um, um, session cookies, they're not sequenced very well, that's an avenue to get into a website because obviously websites most of the time are cookie based for just keeping the session open. Components com Continue decoder, so this is built in. It just decodes, encodes data. Um, where this is useful is when you run across base 64, gzip type things in uh, web forms or submissions. You can easily pop this into decoder. It'll decode it and tell you this is what it is. Um, I won't get into specifics, but as I was doing a test with a specific printer in question, they were actually doing base 64 encoding on the fly. So when you actually type something, um, the password on the web form and you hit submit, they actually would base64 encode that password and send it back to the web server. Burp is smart enough to, uh, with the little configuration, do that for you. Compare, so a visual difference between two items, sometimes it's hard, like you, you'll make a submission on a web page and there's just so much HTML code, you really can't tell if anything changed there's a way to visually see the difference of the submission and, and the response. Intruder, so this is the, the meat and potatoes, in my opinion, of the value of um, Burp Suite. And essentially, this is automated, customized security. So what this allows you to do um, is once you find something of interest, um, it allows you to begin, in an automated fashion, manipulating that portion of the website. Um, or web page, um, and we'll get into this. Uh, hopefully, like I said, I can demo intruder and repeater. Scanner, so this once again is part of the professional version. Um, it can be manual um, or passive or an automated scan. Um, it provides excellent vulnerability detection. Um, the guys at Portswigger do a great job. Um, I don't work for Portswigger, by the way. I, I just like the product. They do a great job of keeping this tool up to date. They're always adding um, add-ins along with the BAP um, user community. Um, minimal false positive in my, in my um, use. I haven't found but maybe two false positives. Um, and there's uh, just a lot more that the scanner can do. Um, it, it does generate HTML reporting for those that need to report to management of uh, vulnerabilities found in their web application. So, so what's it take to run Burp? Not very much, to be honest with you. Browser your choice. I prefer Firefox when doing any testing in um, any web testing. One, it has a bunch of plugins, but two, proxy settings are not system wide. It's for that specific instance that I'm testing. So it just gives me a lot of functionality to quickly pop in and out of Burp. Um, and I'll get into that here in a second. All it really takes to run Burp besides Burp is setting your proxy to localhost 8080. Um, and you're done. Um, you can start using Burp. Um, and as I, I sort of alluded to earlier, um, it's a cool tool just to run at home if you're doing nothing other than browsing the internet. You would be really shocked and surprised at all the different pieces of data um, that go from your browser to a website. Um, someone alluded to earlier about like a, a website and all the different links. 
it's shocking to see how many different links that you have no idea you're communicating to, but Burp in the background is catching all this communication. So it's just fun to actually watch, not even doing hacking, just, just watch. Um, so you set the proxy, which would be um, your Firefox, and you're ready to start burping. Um, that's all there is to it, and you're now officially a web hacker. No, I'm just kidding. It's not quite that easy. Um, so what's the methodology used behind actually make, finding value in the tool? Um, so there's a bunch of ways, like I said, for the people that have used Burp, you might not use it this way or you might. Um, so the first thing you do is set scope, unless you're really just dinking around. You should always set scope. Um, this way, if you accidentally run a scan or you do something malicious, it's pointed at that specific target only. Um, because what will happen, like I said, Burp will catch all communication. Even if you indirectly don't go to a link, it catches that. And if you don't set scope, uh, what could happen is as you're testing, it might actually go to a web page or website that you didn't realize was happening. So always set scope, scan, and loop. Um, scan is in the professional scanner, but once again, it's not that easy. Because if it was, everyone would be using the tool and everyone would be finding vulnerabilities. So there's multiple methods. So these are some of the ones I use. Proxy, Spider, and Spider typically you're going to use if you're doing a pen test engagement on a website. Um, the good thing about Spider, it'll give you a rough idea how many links, how many pages that you actually have to traverse. So then you can hand over a, a, a rough you know, estimate of cost. Um, proxy repeater. Um, this is more for developers uh, and security, and I'll, I'll show you where it comes in. Um, just to test, like, if you think a web form's working how you think it should work, you'd simply send that request to repeater one time. You put in some data you wanted, for instance, maybe a, um, an HTTP header change, uh, an additional parameter in the header, things like that, and just see the response. Um, and then proxy spider intruder. Like I said, it really depends on what you're trying to do. Development versus security. I use it more as a security tool. Developers, I, a few of them, like to use this tool for doing development because it, it is giving you real-time feedback of potential errors, um, redirects that maybe you weren't um, uh, expecting. I, I know a developer at our work that we use this tool to determine they were setting two ident identical cookies and had no idea that their code was sending two identical cookies. Not that it's an issue, but performance down the road, that could cause an issue. So a developer was able to use a tool in that aspect. I have a question. Sure. I mean, I've been noticing a lot of great, for example, hackers using the same exact tool to uh, scan certain websites. And then you see that, you know, basically, when you just start looking at the two caps. Yep. And uh, that's actually the free version, right? Uh, yes, yep. So either the free, and once again, that's easy to change, right? Burp gives you the ability to change the, um, oh gosh, I just lost the word, the actual uh, URL string that actually Burp sends. You do have the ability to manipulate that. But mo most of the time, like for me, I never change it because I'm not doing anything malicious. But yeah, so you will see this. And when you see that, if you work in an organization, my opinion is if you're seeing the Burp uh, uh, URL, or the, um, user agent string on the outside, it's probably two things. One, it probably isn't uh, someone I'd be too worried about uh, right off the bat, right? It's more someone just going out and seeing what the tool does um, because typically pen testers that are using this as a tool on the outside would probably modify that user agent string, right? Um, because this would be a key, right? I've seen a lot of discussions about sims and logging, right? people know to key off of the user agent string it says burp oh, okay well we know this guy's trying to hack right so that's why you change it yep um so methodology manual um so you turn interception proxy off and, and, and the reason is this proxy will record everything by default um burp will automatically stop all requests until you forward it on um the, the good thing about leaving it on though when you're at home um, it's interesting to see other applications that are running on your system that are trying to communicate out that you had no idea about. Like uh, um, Google is always trying to communicate out, always. And it's interesting if you have proxy interception turned on, you're going to stop every request and you can now see all these different, whether it's Mozilla or Google or whoever, you, you can see all these requests. But I personally turn it off while I'm starting to do testing. Um, you set the scope I alluded to earlier. Um, and it's done on the scope page, and we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, 
you don't need to know um, regex. It's smart enough. Once you go to the website, you right click and say set scope, and it uh, actually creates all this uh, regex for you because I'm not a regex expert, so thank goodness. So manual investigation. You need to get to know your target. Well, how do you do that? You start clicking on all the links, right? Now, this can or can, depending on how you're trying to do the engagement, that may or may not work for you. Um, you want to peruse all aspects of the site. Larger site, use Spider. Like, for instance, if your company is standing up a new website, you don't know what it's about. So Spider that thing and figure out all the different links and, and connectivity it might have to website. Um, if you find something interesting, this is where you start to investigate. You either send it to repeater intruder and you passively scan. So once again, to passively scan, you have to have the professional version. But what it does is in the background, um, it, as you click through the sites and open forms, it will actually, it has a plethora of known vulnerabilities and websites, whether it's cross-site scripting or HTTPS non-secure or uh, session cookie non-secure. It, it does this passively and it'll have a nice report at the end for you um, that you'll have something to at least start on and maybe further your engagement. Um, so how do you find vulnerabilities? Uh, so using repeater, you simply locate an interesting request. What's an interesting request? Have no idea. I mean a static page could be an interesting request um, if all you're trying to do is manipulate, for instance, let's just say it's abc.com and there's nothing else on that page but you go to abc.com forward slash admin, right? Um, and something might pop up. It, it's not that simple, but the, conceptually, you you're, you find something of interest. Typically, those are form forms or input fields um, is what you're looking for, um, whether it's password or user, um, SQL injection, those kind of things. You send it to repeater, um, and this is good for manual manipulation. And you'll see how I use it here. So, for instance, let's just say you want to do... Um, um, find users on a website. You might put in a, one user and it comes back and then let's say it's presented another page. So let's say you actually find a valid user. Next thing is, and it's a reset page, um, it'll ask you some question. Um, well now you have a valid user. You've done that without how I'm going to go back to the main web page within a browser and type all this. You're literally doing it from burp and just resubmitting really quick. So it'll speed up the time of manually perusing um, a, a specific web uh, web page. Um, and it also bypasses browser defensive measures. That's the other reason to use BERT. So URL encoding, for instance, and cross-site scripting filters. BERT, because it's sitting on the other side of the browser, you can bypass all of that and you don't have to worry about those security measures. Um, it is single request at a time. Um, that's why I say if you're in some type of uh, engagement, you're probably going to use this, you know, a few times and then you want to go to intruder um, to really get things going a little quicker. So this is repeater. Um, what, what's interesting about Burp, it's a, it's a smart tool in that it understands potential um, insertion points in a web form. And what you're seeing here, so the blue is an actual variable that Burp believes can be manipulated or at least changed. Now, you're allowed to change anything you want on this request, right? I mean, there's nothing that's going to prevent you. But it tries to help you along with giving you cookies, you know, security type stuff, username, password fields, and it color codes those. And those are actually more important when we get to Intruder, and I'll show you that in a second. Um, manipulate any part of the request, instantly see response. So here's Intruder. It's, it's a scanning and an automation tool. Um, so you select any part of the request to modify. For instance, on that previous screen, you saw a path, username password. Um, what Intruder allows you to do is, let's say you had a user list and you had a password list. You could actually automatically feed every um, instance of the variables in your user list along with the password list and it would automatically just go after the website with that input. Um, this is a good way to harvest both user accounts and potentially access, um, unauthorized access, if you hit the right username password combination, um, which we'll get into. Brute force um, fuzzing. So this is good in the aspect if potentially there's an SQL injection capability, um, a cross-site scripting capability. So you'd simply put in, if there was an input form, you might put an uptick. Uh, hit send it to intruder see what the error response is from the, the, the website. If it's something that looks a little fishy, then maybe you got something and you, and you start digging a little farther. 
Um, and you can create your own payloads, um, which is a very nice thing. If you, you know, you have custom written um, scripts or, or data you'd like to dump, um, you know, for maybe file upload purposes, if you find a file upload vulnerability, you can use your own payloads. Uh, multiple types of attacks in Intruder. So the first one is Sniper. So this is just sending a, a single set of payloads um, is inserted into a single position in turn. So it literally would be, let's just say, a, a username field. Um, you would turn on Sniper, give it your username list, and it would just go after that particular uh, variable um, or input field with your list. Uh, battering RAM is single set of payload, but it iterates through all the different portions that you set up on the web request. Um, but it's the same data, um, and it, it's typically uh, used when there's uh, a web page where multiple fields exist, and it's the same data. Um, Pitchfork um, is where you can send multiple different payload sets um, Simultaneously, okay, I didn't know that. Um, you so when you do doing um, somewhat related, um, but not uh, exact. A perfect example of this would be maybe a username and that also has an employee ID tied to it or some type of ID like Steve and my ID is one. Um, that's where you would use Pitchfork, um, and then Cluster Bomb is multiple payload sets. Um, that are tried simultaneously, um, and it iterates through every single one. Um, to be honest with you, these are the two I use the most. Um, they just make the most, uh, they seem to have the best bang for the buck, and for the type of testing I do, um, these two work the best for me. Yes, sir? Which one of those would you use if you're enumerating you know, something? Like, I mean, can you say, like, I want to try this range? Yes, you can. And it, it depending on uh, the web form and how many input fields, I would use Sniper. If it was a single um, input field and I was trying to enumerate users, for instance, I would use Sniper and I would point it right at that um, uh, um, particular web form. If it was a login page, I would use Cluster Bomb. And the first uh, payload would be usernames and the second payload would be um, passwords and each one would be set to the appropriate input field. So for usernames, do you have to have a list or can you just say brute force? Like uh, it does have some capability internal for simple lists. Um, but what's nice, it can integrate into like um, um, some other tools that have, um, like John the Ripper has a ton of passwords. You can integrate that, load that list right into here, and it'll use a John the Ripper list, for instance, for passwords. Um, user list, same thing. If you have your preferred tool, um, you could input that list as well. I've actually just thought about creating um, an integration from Burp into Cool um, f to do potential username type, username password um, guessing off of websites. Um, so it's something to look through. So we're going to go through a walkthrough really quick to show you actually the tool in use and how you might use it if everything works. I'm praying it works. So the setup here is really simple. Um, I have vulnerable website, um, multiple um, vulnerable websites. If you're not familiar with the WASP, um, they actually create a VM that's just full of like WebGoat and um, damn vulnerable web app and Multigo or uh, Multitude and just a plethora of others. Um, so what I got here is my favorite Firefox. I'm logged into WebGoat. First thing you're going to do, I use Foxy Proxy. If you don't use it, it's pretty cool too for doing this kind of stuff. Uh, I'm going to turn Burp on. So now I'm telling it to use Burp um, for everything it does. Go back over to Burp. Um, a couple things too that are nice about Burp. As you actually hit something or Burp sees something, it, it starts to color code stuff. So yeah, a common thing I do all the time is forget that I have interception on and I submit a request and nothing happens. Like what is going on? And by this I could tell just because the orange thing or, or the orange intercept it's orange, it tells me that it's intercepted my packet. So I'm like, oh, that's why the request isn't getting there. So it's just helpful hints. Um, I'm going to turn intercept off for now. Um, go back to the website. Uh, and this is very rudimentary type examples that I'm showing you, but it just gives you an idea, uh, the capability of the actual tool. Um, so this particular one is uh, forgot password. I sort of alluded to how you might use this tool to do this. Um, so actual web goat is the the username tells me that's why I know that. Um, so you hit submit. Hopefully something works. 
Great. And it goes to the next page, and it says, what is your favorite color? And I know the answer is red. So I hit that, and boom, there's my password, right? Um, but now let's go back to Burp um, and show you what it's actually seeing. So it keeps all history of all transactions. Um, so the first thing you'll see, and if you notice right away, I haven't even messed with my browser. I just turned it on, but you can see how many sites that I didn't go to that have already tried to go. You know, Safe Browsing, which is Google, uh, Snippets, Mozilla. So these things are always coming. You have no idea, right? Unless you're one, running one of these, you'd have no idea the type of data that's going out or, or how it's working. Geolocation, they want to know where I'm at right now. So, um, so we actually find the, the request. So you can see here it says forgot password. Um, and there's my username, hit the submit button, um, so on and so forth. So the first step I would do if I was trying to enumerate users, that's where we're going to start. We're going to try to enumerate some users on this web application, is I'd go back to the previous post that I just sent. And I'm going to send this to um, repeater. Remember, that's a single um, instance. Um, it's, so what's going to happen, I'm going to submit something. Real time, I'm going to show the action that was uh, done. So if I move over to repeater, here's the web page uh, with the thing, or with my submission. So what I'm going to do, and you can type anywhere in here, and since I'm, I'm doing user enumeration, I want to try. So we'll just try a basic route, just see. Um, so if I hit go, there's the return. Well, there's a lot of data on there. And how do I know if that was an actual user? So one thing I typically do when I go back and I see um, the web page, if I go back here, and that was webgo. So I see if I actually know a user, something pops up that tells me that I was successful. So I'm going to just copy this right here because I know that if I found a legitimate user, this screen with this verbiage should pop up. So I'm going to come back over to repeater. I'm going to simply type that or paste it into here. Hopefully. OK, not in that box, though. So we don't want that one. Not this one. All right. And zero matches. So. Didn't, I didn't find. So root wasn't a valid user. So let's try admin. Oops, don't hit enter though because when you start messing with stuff like that, it'll go, hey, wait. So all of a sudden you can see down here in the corner, I was searching for this to see if I had a, a match and sure enough, one match. It's a little hard to see, but it came up in orange. So right there I know because that variable is displayed that I have enumerated a, a user. Um, so that's good. The problem is that takes forever using repeater, right? I mean, to manually, it's no different than you going to the website and typing in. Um, so here's what I would do. Now that I know how to enumerate users, um, I would get a list together and I would send that to repeater. But at the same time, now I want to move on to a next step. Since I found a particular user that is of interest to me, usually admin root or good accounts that you want to go after, um, I know that admin um, is a valid account. So I'd go back over to my web page and I would type in red because we know that's the answer to this guy's. Um, I'd hit submit and you know if you get his question right you should see this screen which says what is your favorite color type of thing. So I'm just going to copy this. All right. No, no, no. Uh, yeah, you're right. I just this is the verbiage for a valid. Um, this is just the verbiage for a valid user being found. I'm going to switch that here in a second. But yeah, you're absolutely right. This would not work for admin, but I'm going to get it to work for admin. I just wanted the uh, the the um, verbiage. So if I go back here and I type in admin, and the reason I'm doing this is so that I have a valid account. Now I'm going to go back to Burp with my admin account loaded in proxy history. So if I go down, it should be the last request I made. Sure enough, there's admin. Instead of sending it to a uh, repeater, I'm going to send it to intruder because there could be just a ton of answers for a question, right? I mean, that, it just that's just how it is. So we're going to go over to intruder. And what will happen here, it tells you the target, which this is the target IP uh, that I'm going to go after. Um, position. So here is the actual web request. And once again, I said how smart uh, Burp is. Here are all the fields it believes 
potentially that can take input. So it's highlighted those for me to say, hey, Steve, you should stick some data here, here, and here. Why don't you? Um, I'm not going to because I only care about one field. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clear all these fields out. And I'm going to come back to, um, actually, I lied. Wait, did I? Hold on. I have a, oh, no, that's right. Is that the question? I might grab the wrong request. Oh, that's right. Why am I not seeing it? Hold on. I don't know if I captured that. What's that? Oh, I know what the problem is. Um, hold on. That's why I was in uh, WebGo. Let me um, go back. So this page here, I don't know what a password is, so I'm going to put in one. I'm just going to guess one and see what happens. Incorrect response. So if I go back to uh, Bert now, I didn't submit the page for admin. That's why I wasn't seeing it. So if I scroll down now, what I should see is a request for forgot password. And sure enough, now I have the color variable. So I'm going to send this to Intruder. Go back over to Intruder. Go to my positions. So I'm going to clear them all out. I only care about this position. I'm trying to figure out what this guy's password or his answer to his question is. So I'm going to say add. And what that does, it adds a variable. It just puts dollar sign, one dollar sign. You can put whatever you want in there. I'm now going to go to payloads. I select sniper as my attack. Remember I used sniper or cluster bomb? Since this is a specific one piece of information form, I want to use sniper. I'm going to go to my payloads. I'm going to actually load a list that I created before this that is just simply a list that has colors in it. Um, obviously, you could expand that to whatever you want. I'm going to come down here um, for options to save me time. So what this grep match does, if there was specific verbiage you were looking for um, that you knew, because what happens, you could submit thousands, tens of thousands of these at one time, and going through that data would be really hard. So you need a visual cue when you're doing this much testing that, hey, there's something I hit. So inside of grep, okay, I'm just adding this. If you remember, this was what happens um, if you have a valid username. The next thing is, is what's your question? So if I get this right, um, oh, actually, no, this isn't going to work. Yeah, I didn't step one step. Hold on. Uh, what I really want to see is this. Red. All right. So if you find a valid answer to a question, what's displayed is for security purposes. So that's what I actually want to add into here. I'll just remove that one. All right, so going back, so I got my target set. I have my position that I care about set. I have the payload I'm going to deliver to that specific position in the web form. My option is, hey, if you find this word, visually indicate it to me. Simply going to run intruder, hit start attack. You see it blow through that list really quick. Um, and there's a bunch of, you know, what I didn't show. The reason you're seeing error, all this other stuff, is those are default canned um, words that it looks for that might be important. I could have deleted those out, but for demo purposes, I didn't. Um, so let me go back to my attack. But what we should see over here is this column right here that says, for, for security reasons, please change your password. That's what I am looking for. And you could see just visually really quick that I must have found a, uh, the answer to the question because it found that in a return um, in one of the requests. So if I go back over to the actual request, which I think was green. Nope, it was red. <clears throat> And I scroll down here. 
we should see a password in here somewhere is my assumption. Why am I not seeing it? Oh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, oops. Why am I not getting a password? Why am I not seeing it? Oh, password is WebGo. I use WebGo instead of admin. But what, what the, the concept being is I now see the password because I hit the right, so I hit the right um, um, payload. So essentially, that's just what you do. That was a high level quick overview of how you would use the tool. Um, let me get back into the presentation here. Um, so the next piece is extender. Um, this um, is also part of um, um, Burp Suite um, free edition, um, but there's a caveat to the free edition. But anyways, what it can do, it, it's extensions written by Burp users, including the guys at Portswigger, um, and map integration, SQL, et cetera, et cetera. Tons of stuff. You can write your own if you know how to write in Java, Python, or Ruby. Easily integrate um, some of your own testing. Um, so let me switch back over to extender really quick so you get a feel. Um, for what extender is. So here's extender. Um, this is the store. So these are just basic out of the box um, um, BAPs that have already been written by users. Um, and it's what's nice about it, it'll tell you right away if you need pro ver version to run it or not. Um, so that'll save you some time. Um, so what I want to do now is show you an extender, which is a little more uh, deep. Uh, obviously it's extended functionality. So let's see if I can get this to work. If I remember the password. Okay. Um, and we're going to do some SQL injection. Um, and I'm just simply going to see, obviously I know this web is, but if it wasn't, I'd hit submit. Obviously I can put a one in there, right? And that works. Um, if I was to put an uptick, um, let's see what happens. Good possibility this has the potential for SQL injection. Only based because one, I know the app, but more importantly, this horrible error message that's displayed that's saying, hey, I didn't understand that input. What does that mean? Um, so let's go back to um, Burp. And if we go to our trusty proxy. We'll see a couple requests in here. Here's the admin. Why am I not seeing? Oh, here it is. Why am I not seeing my request? It's the second one. The last one. See how it's tied to this. Oh. I want this one. Oh, okay. Yeah, here it is. So here's the, the SQL, because what I want is I don't want the one that errors, because when you feed this to SQL map, it's not it's gonna be like I don't understand an error. Um, so I want the one that I determined by if that was intruder that it is vulnerable. So I'm going to send this. You actually just highlight down here. I've preloaded SQL PY, which is just an API between um, SQL map and Burp. It's the integration. So there's the submission um, that I want to do. I need to turn on this really quick. Hopefully it turns on. That's a good sign. All right, it's connected. Um, I need to put in the IP address of the, the host. One, nine, two, one, six, eight. 237.something, uh, 237.1, and my port is 32.123. So the post data, the data I care about, if you go back and look at the request um, in, in, in proxy, is actually ID. You can see that's the one that's vulnerable potentially to the SQL injection. Um, so if I go back over to um, extender. What's that? Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you. So one, and then the data. Oh, thanks. <laughs> uh, and then I care about ID equals, and the test parameter I want to send it is ID because that's what I'm looking for. 
um, test only. And then just for kicks, I want to try to see if I could get a list of users, passwords, and maybe the databases. I am not an SQL expert in any way, may, way or shape or form. This is why I like the integration with SQL map because I let SQL map do all the work. I just feed it my data. Um, and now what you could have done is copy that entire request directly in SQL map and it would have done it from there. So if I start scan, hopefully I get some results here in a couple of seconds. So the scan started, this might take a minute. Um, so what will happen, it's actually sending this now. If I go look at, um, uh, extender, why am I not seeing the output? So if we look here in the output, uh, I'm not seeing nothing. Oh. There you go. So here's the actual commands being sent. So you can see my request, right? Um, here's the actual SQL map creation by the tool. Um, here's the data it's sending it. It's working its way through. And you can see it's already done. And down here it tells me SQL vulnerabilities were found for tasks. So it's telling me, hey, you got vulnerabilities. The reason this particular tool uh, requires professional is because it uses scanner to report out on uh, the findings, and if I come down here, if I go to SQLI, come down here, it tells you the exact parameters, the actual SQL statements that were used to find the injection, and here's the enumerated data. It was able to find one user, and it found two different databases. So that's just a quick high level of how you can integrate other platforms or tool sets into this to help you do web uh, assessment and testing. This is the stuff I just showed you. Another example where I was able to pop the actual user accounts out of past WD. So, um, so clothing thoughts, free version, great for developers. Integrate into development process, your, S your security development life cycle. Um, execute tests, like I said, it's one off. It's great for developers to run quick tests against their web apps um, to catch the whole uh, low hanging fruit. Um, professional versions for security professionals because of the scanner, because of the safe search, um, and it will also help you determine the complexity or a scope of an engagement um, so that you can then, you know, give a ballpark estimate if you are a, a pen tester, how much it might cost. Some links, um, two I just like to call out really quick. If you've never messed with W or Samurai WTF, it's made by the guys from Secure Ideas. It's an entire Linux platform built for web penetration testing. It includes BERT, Zap, uh, Zap Proxy, Web Scarab, everything you need. Um, and the last one um, is made by uh, Amon Hardikar. Um, it is a full listing of all the different both websites and downloadable apps you can use that are vulnerable to thousands of different things. Um, highly recommend it. SANS actually gives away a free poster. If you know who SANS are, you can get a poster from them. Absolutely free. And with that, any questions? Have these actually uh, uh, PowerPoint slides uploaded somewhere? Uh, the great question I can't, is there anyone here at this conference that can answer that? I, I will have to get you that answer because I have no idea. I see it's on video, but I don't know if you can actually, I have no problem giving you the slides. If you want to give me your email, I'll be more than happy to send you the slides. I have no issue. Uh, I have a question. Sure. Do you know anybody actually using this uh, tool to do malware analysis? Um, no, that I don't. Um, it would be difficult um, in the aspect that it's not capturing full packets, right? It's only capturing HTTPS requests or anything going to port 8080. Um, now, you, you can set it up to listen on other ports, but it truly is only there to really inspect HTTPS, HTTP traffic. Um, uh -huh. Any other questions? Great, I finished on time. Thanks everyone for your time, I appreciate it.